Hey everyone, welcome back to Bell Yogi. My name is Michelle, and today we're going to do a yoga for cyclists video. So this yoga class will really help those that are cyclists, but it's also good for anyone that might need to stretch out their lower body um, a little bit more. So we're gonna stretch out the feet, the calves, uh, the hamstrings, the glutes, and even the quadriceps in the front of the leg. So without further ado, let's get started. Come to child's pose on your mat. So you'll bring your big toes together, separate your knees a little bit wider than you might um, normally. So maybe as wide as your mat. Sit on your heels first, and then we'll hinge forward from the waist. Take your forehead down on the mat. Once you get down in your child's pose, just notice the breath here. And watch the breath as it moves in and out through your nose. On your inhale, we're gonna come up to all fours. And you can keep your big toes together. And as you exhale, you're gonna sit back to your heels. Now for some, if you're, the back of the legs are really tight, you might not be able to fully sit on your heels. It might just be a little too painful, right? So you just move to your range of motion. Inhale forward, exhale back. Connecting the breath to the movement really helps to develop that mind-body connection which is essential, right? Essential for your cycling, essential for your life. Just do it a few more times. See if you can make that connection. Your hands are spread nice and wide. Find space between the fingers. Good, and on your next inhale, come back up to all fours and you'll separate your feet so that your knees are right under your hips, your feet are about hip distance apart. And then from here, extend your right leg straight back. So your right foot is gonna press into the floor, press your heel straight back. Also press into the floor with your hands and do a few pulses to start. And then eventually just press that heel back and hold it. Feel a nice stretch in the back of the foot or the bottom of the foot, the back of the calf, the back of the leg rather, the back of the lower leg, just breathe. Good, and then on your exhale, release that right knee down and you'll switch sides. So now extend the left leg straight back and you just kind of pulse. So pulse through the heel. My shoulders are coming forward and back a little bit. Maintain your focus on your breath and then press the heel back and hold it. Make sure you're not holding the breath. So the breath is really fluid here as you're holding this uh, static posture or this static stretch. Good, and then on your next exhale, you'll release the left knee down. Now from here, we're gonna uh, just alternate. So extend your right leg, release. Extend your left leg and release. About five on each side. We're gonna get into a big toe stretch and bottom of the foot stretch. So just wanna make sure the feet are prepared. This is kind of like gradually gonna go a little deeper with the stretch here. All right, once you've done about five, make sure they're even, you even them both out. You're gonna curl both of your toes under. And for some, just pushing your seat towards your heels might be enough of a stretch. 
And if that is you, then stay there and just breathe through it. For others, you might need something a little bit um, more intense. So you can walk yourself back and sit all the way on your heels. All right, so my heels are super high. I'm getting a really good toe stretch here. And see if you're all the way up like me, see if you can keep the shoulders directly over those hips. Maybe you keep your gaze um, straight in, for, in front of you, chin parallel to the floor. Perhaps you take a moment to close your eyes to feel this a little deeper. And then just breathe into the sensation about five more deep breaths. Make sure it's not taking your breath away. And then open your eyes, take your hands back to the floor and tap your toes, tap, 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 tap. Tap the top of the feet on the floor so you're waking up and activating now the front of the foot. From here, you'll inhale, arch your back, seat up, chest up. And as you exhale, round through your spine, feel a cat pose. Inhale to cow and exhale to cat. Just a few of these warming up the spine. Let it feel nice. Good. And then on this next one, you're going to inhale, arch your back, look up. And as you exhale, push down into your hands and feet, round your back, lift your knees. Inhale, drop your knees, arch your back. Exhale, push, lift, round. Again, inhale to arch, exhale, gently lift. About five, going back and forth. And this last one, this fifth one, we're gonna hold the knees lifted and just breathe. Feel a separation between the shoulder blades, a good ankle stretch, top of the foot stretch, just breathe here. and then release. You're gonna come back to child's pose, sit back to your heels, maybe your knees are a little bit closer this time, and then rest your forehead down. Release any tension with your exhale. So as you inhale, you're nourishing your body, your mind, your senses, and as you exhale, you're cleansing, releasing, letting go. All right, from here, you're going to walk yourself back upright. You might need a little uh, mat behind you, so walk yourself forward if you need. So you're going to come up onto your, um, your sit bones, I mean your heels again. <laughs> Make sure your toes are pointed this time, okay? And then from here, you're going to take your hands back behind you. So this is going to stretch out through the quadricep, the front of the leg, the front of the top leg. And you can walk yourself back, maybe lift your heart, get a little shoulder stretch or chest opener here, right? Really stretching out. And if this is not helping you feel the quads, then think about tucking your hips slightly. So your pubic bone comes up towards your ribs a little bit. And then for me, I need to come all the way down onto my forearms to feel this. And just breathe. You can have your knees a little bit separated. Maybe your feet are even separated. Really kind of play gently um, around in your body to see what feels best for you, most supportive. And then find your breath. Good, if you're on your forearms now, start to bring yourself back to your hands. 
you'll come back forward. And then from here, I want you just to come back to all fours and sway your hips a bit side to side. So just sway to the left and right. If you have uh, tight outer hips here, this is gonna feel good. Good, from here, let's take that right knee, a right foot forward in between your hands. Now, if your hands don't easily touch the floor, then take blocks or books or whatever you have to heighten or to add a little height away from the floor um, under your hands, okay? And then slide your left leg back and let's today curl the toes under so you get a nice foot stretch again. Right, and just allow your hip to press forward and down. If you're new to this, it might look like this at first. So see if you can just soften the hips forward. That's gonna target the hip flexor, the psoas on the left side right now. And then breathe through any sensation that you're feeling. Sensation in the muscles is good. Pain or um, sensation in the joints is not so good. So just um, be mindful of that. So if you're having any pain in the knee here, maybe try pointing the toes or try um, sliding a blanket or even folding your mat up halfway for a little bit extra support under the knee might be helpful. Good, and then again, we're gonna um, now shift the hips back. Right leg becomes straight. You're gonna walk your hands back a bit. If the hands don't easily touch, now you can put the hand uh, interlaced on top of the thigh, make sure it's not on the knee, it's on the thigh, and just don't put too much weight up on that thigh. All right, so it's just a little bit extra balance support. You can also make it a little bit more strength-based by taking your hands straight back behind you, making sure that the arms are really active, and then see if you can flex the right foot, bringing the toes back towards the face, and breathe here smoothly and comfortably. and then you'll re-bend that right knee. And from here, we'll just take the right foot out to the side. Both hands are gonna be on the inside of the right foot. Squeeze your right knee in towards your shoulder, and now this is lizard pose. So a little different of a variation here. You can keep the back toes curled or point them if that feels better. And then see if you can push into the hands in that right foot uh, and lift that left knee up off the floor. Everything's really strong here for three, for two, <laughs> and we said four, and one. Drop that left knee back to the ground. And now take your right hand to your thigh. Point your left toes and start to open up that right knee as you look over your right shoulder. Good, we'll come back through to center. You're gonna lift the left knee up and then step the right foot back and take a downward facing dog. So for this down dog, I want you to keep your heels super high. So you're just on the balls of the feet and then push firmly into both of your hands and see if you can get your pelvis up a little higher towards the ceiling. They can be a little bend in your knees like me. And then lower that right heel towards the floor and bend your left knee even deeper. Even off the weight in the hands. Stretch out through the back of that right leg, from the hamstring to the calf. And then inhale, lift your right heel up, and you'll drop your left heel down as you bend your right knee deeper. Make sure you're still breathing fluidly. 
And then both heels will lift up and try to reach both heels towards the floor. They might not get there, that's okay. It's something to strive for. Good, you guys. And then you'll step your left foot between your hands, drop your right knee to the floor, and come on up when you're ready. So you'll slide your right leg back. I don't know why I said come on up. <laughs> slide your right leg back. Allow your hips to press forward and down. I guess you could come upright if you want. But we're, we're focusing on stretching. So just stretch through that right hip flexor, that psoas. Make sure the knee's right over the ankle. Oh yeah, and then you're gonna curl those right toes under. Good. Just a few more breaths. And then start to walk your hands back. You'll start to extend your left leg, foot is flexed. You can keep your hands right here on either side of the shin. Or again, if it's better for you just to take your hands to your thighs, you stretch out, or even some support if you have like a table nearby, that might be better. Or make this more strength-based, hinge forward a little bit more, reach your arms back, find strength through the arms. I like to interlace the fingers here. Good. And then you'll re-bend that left knee, pull, place both hands on the inside of the left foot now. Allow your left knee to squeeze in towards your shoulder, think upward facing dog in the upper spine. So you're bringing your shoulders back and your chest slightly forward. You can continue to keep your right toes curled if that feels good. Or try pointing them now. Good, then you're going to lift that right knee up and hold it strong here. So that right leg is super straight, super long. Breathe for three, for two, and one. Now look forward, and you're gonna take a big step forward with your right foot. So now we're gonna land in this little squat here. All right, and then if this doesn't work for you, you can be here. Squatting down with your hands on your thighs. Maybe you can go a little lower, place a block or books under your seat. Try to lift the crown of the head up. We won't be here too long. Breathe for three. For two. And one. All right, from here, hands come down. We're just taking a nice forward fold. Allow the upper body to hang down towards the lower body. You can let those arms dangle, or if they're, if you have the flexibility, maybe the hands are on the floor. Straighten out through those legs, shift the weight forward and back a few times. Good, and then let's take the hands back to the floor, take a big step back, Downward facing dog again. And from here, slide your right knee forward, bring that chin to the floor, and then you're gonna slide your left leg back. Now see if you can keep your right knee a little bit outside the hip. It's not terrible if it's straight on, but it's just a little bit different of a feeling for some people, at least for me, when the knee is slightly angled. So it's like you want the knee to be moving towards the upper right hand corner of your mat. Okay, and then walk yourself back up or walk yourself upright and um, see if you can feel a good stretch here again on the psoas or hip flexor. Just notice what you feel before folding into this half pigeon that many of you are probably familiar with. 
So if you've been in this pose before, maybe see if you can feel something just a little different or maybe a little aha moment here as you perhaps kind of move a little bit in this pose. You can sway the upper body. And then find stillness. Make sure that you're not tightening the jaw, right? That the muscles in the face are relaxed. The jaw is relaxed. And then start to walk yourself back up, right? You're gonna lift the left knee up, step the right foot back, straighten to down dog, pedal up the feet. And then when you're ready, you're gonna take that left foot forward or left shin rather forward and then slide your right leg back. Again, I'm making sure that knee is a little bit out, um, a little bit wider than my hip. Just walk your hands back to lift the spine up and then breathe here. Perhaps you're feeling this on the right side of the body first. Everybody is so different though, so it just depends. And then walk your hands forward. Move into the sensation with feeling. And breathe through it. Nice work, walk yourself back upright. You'll curl the right toes under, press down to lift your hips up. And then from here, we're just coming forward into all fours and you're gonna lower all the way down to your belly. Now, you can kind of fold your arms or whatever is um, most comfortable for your upper body, but you're gonna bend your left knee, reach back for the foot and try to bring your heel towards your seat. I kind of turned my knee or my elbow out to the side here. You rest your forehead on your forearm or your hand. For me, I need a little bit more feeling. So I'm going to push my heel, the top of my foot, I'm going to Bring the heel of my hand into the top of my foot and push my heel a little bit outside the left hip, coming a little more upright in my upper body. <clears throat> but if you're already feeling it, don't go any further. <clears throat> no need to. Good. And then let's release. We'll switch sides. So bend your right knee, reach back for the foot, bring the heel towards your seat. You can bring your forehead or your chin onto your hand. <clears throat> and then for me, I'm gonna go a little bit further, come more upright on my left forearm, push the heel of my hand into my foot. Good. And then you'll release, come on up, and we'll transition to our bottom. <clears throat> now from here, let's take that right ankle and cross it on top of the left thigh. So it's right above the knee. All right, and you'll bend your left knee. So I take my hands back behind me, bend my left knee. And then from here, you kind of just sway a little side to side. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can play around with bringing your left foot a little closer to your seat. 
Maybe you want to draw your chest up towards your thigh. Oh, that's my calf, really. <laughs> and just breathe. So once you find a little movement, you can find some stillness. You can also do this completely lying on your back. If that feels better. And then we're going to move into a spinal twist. So come back upright. You're going to place that right foot on the floor. Wrap your left arm around your shin. Make sure your left foot is flexed. And then start to twist over your right shoulder gently and slowly. As you inhale, you'll come through center, extend your right leg straight, bend your left knee up, and then take the left ankle on top of that right thigh. Same thing here. You're going to lean back onto your hands as you bend your right knee and do a little sway here side to side. And then find some stillness, perhaps maybe moving a little deeper into the pose as you lift your chest up towards your calf or draw your heel in towards your seat. Good. And let's come upright it completely. Extend that right leg straight. Place the left foot down on the floor. Wrap your right arm around your shin, hug your knee in close, sit up tall, and take that gentle twist over the left shoulder. Good, well done. Let's come back through center, extend both legs. You're gonna draw your knees up into your chest. Give yourself a great big hug for all that work you just put in for your body, mind, and spirit. And then open your knees out wide. Soles of the feet are touching. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. And exhale, start to hinge forward from the hips. And take about five more breaths here. Walk yourself back upright. And then feel free to end any way you'd like. Maybe you want to come down for a five to ten minute shavasana lying on your back. Perhaps you want to end in a little seated meditation here, taking a moment to close your eyes and just tuning more inward. You can choose how to end. Thank you all so much for joining me today. And I hope this is helpful for you and your cyclist friends. Please share uh, this video with your loved ones, your friends. And um, if you liked this video, press the like button below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. I will see you all soon. Happy holidays. Namaste.